Not everything that hurts on the owner side of the hand is a DFCC. Keep on watching if you want to see a hand surgeon's perspective on how to do the assessment. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. This practical paper may be a guide in your assessment of ulnar sided wrist pain. There are several proposed algorithms for history taking. The authors suggest a three-story model reflecting the lower, middle and upper regions. As you can see, the lower story regards pathologies of the distal radial ulnar joint, the middle of the radiocarpal joint and the upper of the carpal metacarpal joints. Imaging might complement your clinical examination. Plane and dynamic radiographs, CT scans and MRIs can be helpful here. Radiographs can help look at fractures, erosions, the carpal tunnel, arthritis and lytic lesions. Fluoroscopy or dynamic imaging can be useful to check for instability. In lunotriquetral ligament injuries, a catch-up of the triquetrum when moving from radial to ulnar deviation can be seen. CT scans can help to identify occult fractures in the hamate and pisiform. It can check for distal radial ulnar joint or DRUJ instability as well. An MRI might be useful to diagnose TFCC tears and show tendon thickening in tendinopathies. Dynamic MRIs or CT scans can identify subtle instabilities. However, a diagnostic arthroscopy is regarded as the gold standard to diagnose these TFCC tears. The surgeon can diagnose lunotriquetral interosseous ligament tears and intraarticular pathologies as well during this procedure. Lastly, ultrasound is preferred to check for tendonitis and subluxating of the extensor carpi ulnaris. Now, on to some more specific diagnoses with their accompanying treatment. Limitations of forearm rotation, pain, instability, decreased grip strength and clicks should lead clinical suspicion towards the DRUJ injury or pathology causing ulnar sided wrist pain. This can be traumatic or inflammatory. A table around different disorders can be seen here. Pause the video to have a more thorough look at it. One can test the side-to-side -side joint play to reject or accept an instability hypothesis. Another useful test for instability is pressing the table when standing up as a modification of the press test for the TFCC. Chronic DRUJ instability will usually be treated with stability exercises for the wrist and the splint. When this appears to be inadequate, a surgical procedure correcting bony deformities and or soft tissue laxity can be performed. Arthritis of the DRUJ will be accompanied by reduced pro and supination with pain and crepitus. In the case of arthritis, together with DRUJ instability, a trial of conservative treatment will be tried out. If unsuccessful, a salvage procedure is preferred. Another condition called ulnocarpal impaction syndrome describes painful loading of the distal ulna or TFCC to the carpus. Usually this presents as a triad of a lengthened ulna, a TFCC tear, and a lunotriquetral ligament injury. Oftentimes a forceful pronated grip causes pain. The cause of this condition can be traumatic due to certain types of fractures or malunion or congenital. The ulnocarpal stress test can be used to confirm the suspicion. However, this test will likely be positive with TFCC tears or lunotriquetral ligament tears as well. The test consists of elbow flexion, ulnar deviation and compression of the ulnocarpal joint while pro and supinating the arm. The conservative treatment consists of splinting and anti-inflammatories. If ulnar lengthening is present, a shortening procedure can be performed. The ulnar styloid impaction syndrome is a different kind and a less common form. An elongated ulnar styloid can interfere with the triquetrum, causing synovitis, chondromalacia and ulnar sided wrist pain. In the early stage, the TFCC acts as a buffer, but due to repeated movement, it gets eroded. The ulnar styloid will then contact the triquetrum directly in supination wrist extension and ulnar deviation. The pain will be located at the distal tip, whereas in ulnar impaction syndrome, the pain will be more over to the ulnar head and lunate when pronating, 
with ulnar deviation. Now, off to lunotriquetral instability. These can be acute or chronic. A lunotriquetral ligament injury can occur from a dorsal compression force in a palmar flex wrist resulting in lunotriquetral instability. A fall on an outstretched hand with ulnar deviation can create instability as well. Tenderness on the lunotriquetral ligament is the most common finding. A useful test for this is gliding the triquetrum and pisiform with respect to the lunate. Increased laxity might indicate lunotriquetral instability. Other abnormal findings may be painful shearing or crepitus. The conservative treatment is usually a cast for six weeks to let the incomplete ligament tear heal. A steroid injection could be done if there is associated synovitis. With regards to surgery, a reconstruction can be performed. Eccentric carpal ulnaris tendonitis is one of the most common chronic complaints of the ulnar side of the wrist. Snapping on forearm rotation and tenderness over the dorsum of the wrist is often present. A test to differentiate from intraarticular pathology is placing the elbow in flexion with supination of the forearm, performing resisted radial abduction of the thumb. This requires an isometric contraction of the flexor and extensor carpi ulnaris muscles. A painful test is considered positive. The authors state that the mainstay of conservative treatment consists of rest in a neutral position and a reduction of the tendons if subluxations are present. The flexor carpi ulnaris tendonitis is usually painful 3 cm proximal to the pisiform, which differentiates it from pisotriquetral arthritis. Rest, a splint, and anti-inflammatories are usually prescribed. Another less common complaint can be caused by an acute laceration to the ulnar side of the wrist by damaging the dorsal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve. Other uncommon complaints might be due to kists and neoplasms. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I'm Max for Physio Tutors, and I will see you in another video. Bye.